Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com geeking out with you today over a debate. And this debate is one that rages in nearly every creative services profession. It's the Mac and PC thing yet again, but it's the spin here is for video editing. You guys know my feelings on this with graphic design. A lot of that bleeds over to video editing as well, but it's actually much more pronounced here because with graphic design, I can make the argument that the power difference in what you need is not gonna be as extreme. But when it comes to video editing, especially in a world where 4K video editing is becoming more practical for more people, it's becoming cost effective, and there are more brands and companies that are actually interested in pursuing it, which means there's money out there for you guys who keep wanting to say 4K video is not a thing yet. Uh, fine, keep doing that, leave money on the table, I'll take it, take those jobs, but yeah. So, I mean, it's a real thing. It's a practical consideration. You have big YouTubers who are in the video production and filmmaking side, like Freddie Wong, that were diehard Apple fans for years, but became impractical, and they switched over to Windows and custom builds. You have 3D animators and architects who do the same thing. They go over to Windows PCs because they need the ability to have something that they can customize and that will scale with their needs, and it will let them have the power to buy back their, more, their time, do faster rendering, and so sometimes as much as we love user experience it's not enough to sacrifice the practicality of our time time is money it really is when you're talking about video it gets very serious very quickly so why is it such an issue well I will tell you as someone who's edited the far majority or at least half of my videos on the iMac versus some Windows machines some of which have been more robust some have newer technology in them I will tell you that the render time difference does matter and it comes down to hardware specs more than anything. As much as you might love a user experience of an operating system, once you get into an application like Premiere Pro, it disappears. There's just the user experience of the Adobe uh, system when you're doing that. And as someone who uses the primary um, Adobe applications is what I do, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, After Effects, all those things, that's where I spend the far majority of my time. I see the Apple ecosystem infinitely less i see the windows ecosystem infinitely less to the adobe ecosystem i spend 90 95 percent of my time on any of these machines in those applications not the os so i could care less about the os for the most part the issue that i have with apple is that i actually own a defunct mac pro tower one of those big heavy aluminum cases like that thing and i remember when there used to be very little difference because I could upgrade that. I could put in more hard drives. I could put in another GPU. I could do whatever I wanted and be in the Apple ecosystem. I could customize it and tailor it to me. That disappeared and they gave us a trash can to replace it. I remember having a real video editing system in Final Cut Pro 7. That went away and they dumbed it down to make it iMovie Pro, i.e. Um, Final Cut Pro X, right? So that's a problem. Now they're gluing all of my parts that I could upgrade and customize and tweak to fit me and to be as fast as I want to the machine and telling me I can't change it, I void the warranty, all this stuff. So I have no choice but to spend as much money as possible to buy a machine that's going to be outdated and can never grow with me and to just have to buy a new one. And the only upside is that it retains most of its resale value and I can sell it to somebody else and that's it. And that's just not good enough for me. That is just not good enough for me as a business owner. That is just not good enough for me as a, a creator. I feel abandoned by Apple sometimes. I say it in these videos a lot, but I genuinely feel like I remember a different Apple. I really do. I'm not a new Apple person. I remember a very different Apple. I grew up in this industry. I grew up as a creative professional uh, watching people use these devices and I get it and I get the fanboy and fangirl thing, but I feel betrayed. I feel like it's a bad relationship and like I just keep coming back for more abuse for whatever reason. Now I get it, Windows is not without its issues. Manual updates and bugginess and blah, 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 blah. But Windows 10 is not as bad as it used to be. And again, I'm spending most of my time in Adobe and I can tell you flat out that Apple and Windows crash Adobe products equally. I use these things every day. I'll tell you flat out, that's the truth. But here's the trade-off. If I spend $2,000 on a really beautiful iMac 27 inch 
that's just the base model and I've got 16 gigs of RAM I've got a 20 cents, uh, 27 inch monitor and that's all I get if I go and I spend two thousand dollars right now I can build and I am building for a little less I can build a machine that has literally six drives with three of them being like or four of them being SSDs from Samsung uh, I can have 32 gigs of RAM and I can have a GTX 970 in there as a GPU that makes a real big difference I can actually probably throw two of those in there if I decide to skip back on not having two monitors so yeah I can have a 27 or 32 inch 4k monitor uh, from Dell or Asus I can have multiple hard drives for video editing which is really practical and instead of having a mobile version of a graphics processor which is what the IMAX use they use a mobile version of the graphics processor I can have a real GPU in there I can have a monster in there and a year later if I've got more cash laying around I can throw in a second one so again for doing video for doing 3d animation for doing architecture it becomes this really confusing argument to have the premium creative thing that everyone talks about to have an Apple device versus having something powerful enough to fit your needs within your budget. And it's a struggle for people. And the reality is, if you're not doing super high-end work, and even if you are doing it a little bit and you've got the money and you just love the Apple experience, I'm not telling you it's wrong to buy Apple, I'm just saying that I feel that you're not getting your money's worth. But you are paying for the experience you want, so maybe you are. If it comes down to power, and faster render times if it comes down to more stability and security if I build a Windows machine or I have it built for me I can have mirror raid in there I can have a backup of all of my data right there and know that if a hard drive fails it's right on the second one I swap them out and it's very easy to do that and it's not expensive that is security that is stability of your project that protects you that protects your clients that matters that's really important, especially when you're talking about video, something that's not gonna be easy to reproduce. But Roberto, why do all these video people use the MacBook Pro then? Well, I mean, it's fine and it'll work and it'll get the job done, but a Windows laptop like an Asus ROG or something else that can have two hard drives in it so that you can have something that you can offload as a media cache and then something that's the data drive, I mean, those things matter and that helps with speed and a lot of these are just going to have better render times at the end of the day for the same price and are gonna have more RAM and more features and you know even faster CPUs. That's something that we have to actually have an argument about. I get why the laptop experience of the MacBook Pro, I mean, look, my brother actually just got one and it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. But you know what? My Dell XPS 13 is gorgeous and it's beautiful too. You know, I mean, if you really care about that though, more than how long it takes to render a video well you know i just really don't have anything to say about that because i just need the time back i have too much to do and i need the time back and time is money but if you really want that experience then you're getting what you're paying for i would say though that i like the idea of having a laptop having portability and knowing that it's a true desktop replacement that's got the power and that's got the stability and the features necessarily to do the work more than I care about the experience. If I'm doing something casually or leisure, I care about the experience. But again, like I said, I'm spending 95% of my time in an application, not an operating system. So that's where I draw the line on it. I think that bang for the buck, you can get better video editing laptops from other brands. Does that mean I'm never gonna buy a MacBook Pro? If nothing else for review reasons, I probably will end up with a MacBook Pro at some point. Does that mean that it would be my primary thing? No, it might be something that I take the meetings, it might be something I use for presentations, and that might make sense for me. And again, that's down the road, and I'm speculating on that. The reality is, if I could buy any video editing laptop today in a 15 inch form factor, I would probably buy a Dell XPS 15, or I would buy an Asus. I'd probably buy one of the Asus, whether it was the ROG, or whether it was something else, that's probably what I would buy, and I'll be doing a video about that. I still think the MacBook Pro is an amazing machine, but I also know that there are other machines that are ahead of the curve on it. We haven't even gotten the 2016 MacBook Pro yet, but the update to the 2016 MacBook was not that impressive, and so I'm really concerned about that. I'm concerned that something like the Dell XPS 13 has Thunderbolt 3 in it already, 
and that we don't have Apple devices that are going there yet. And I think that that's an issue. I think that the speed that you get for that if you're doing video editing makes a real big difference with fast hard drives and data transfer speeds are essential. So it's a workflow issue. I think it's less about the romanticism of I like Windows, I like Mac versus what's really going to get the job done. And I think that conversation is something that doesn't happen nearly enough. By the way, I'm sure you guys will let me know what you think in the comments. There are links in the description to help you guys out figuring this out as far as some recommended computer products for your video editing needs, uh, some stuff that I own, some stuff that my friends own, and there, you know, some stuff that's being tested here for the channel. So uh, that's it. This isn't a fun topic for me sometimes because I know how people feel about it. I know how passionate people are about the ecosystem and the products they buy, and I'm not bashing or hating on people for their choices. I just want people to make an informed buying decision and really think about the process of the work. Anyway, let me know how you feel about this in the comment section. I know you're gonna anyway. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for geeking out with me on yet another debate between Mac and PC.